So although some of these images are going to give you the impression that it's always easy to see a stone, I hope what you're also appreciating is that as the provider fans through and interrogates the gallbladder, there are lots of times when you can't see that stone, right? And so you need to be, again, thorough in your assessment. Here's an image I really like, a stone. Just kind of see it there, it kind of pops up. And you can see how that could be overlooked if you were going a little too quickly. And then this one's just beautiful. This is uh, this is one from the old days. Just love this one. It's great, as you can see them sitting right against the IBC. And here's another one that kind of has a funny appearance with a whole bunch of stones kind of laying across the bottom multiple stones. Is there a sonographic difference if it's a cholesterol stone versus a pigment stone versus a, a chamber stone? Is it the same? So it, I think it's hard, and, and Mark can correct me, there may be new literature I'm not aware of. It's hard to differentiate between what the composition of stones are. Most of the time at point of care, and we'll get to this, we think about differentiating between a stone and a polyp. That's really where most of our differentiation comes from. Although I think based on pathology, right, you can make some assumptions. So if it's a, a young infant that has sickle cell, then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna know that stone is gonna be a different makeup. Now, what do we see in this image? Anybody appreciate anything? We could ask. A, we turn the lights down a little bit. Yeah, so this is pericholecystic fluid, right? You can see that it's around. And again, this can be very subtle. So it really, you know, you need to kind of take your time, make sure that you interrogate well. Here's another example of some pericholecystic fluid. You see this one's a little bit easier to see. Here's a third example. You can see that the fluid kind of allows us to see the outline of the gallbladder a little bit better. So again, remember, this is a piece of the puzzle. You can't have fluid around the gallbladder if you just have ascites. So you don't want to always just see fluid around the gallbladder and think right away that this is gall disease. But it's in the context of the patient's presentation. Um, was it a stone that I um, Let's just pop back and see. Oops. So it looks like there's a whole series of stones down there. Oh, the next one? So I think it's hard in this image to say. Uh, I think if you were able to slow it down, uh, I think you see a little bit right at the base of the neck. And we're going to talk about this again in a moment. Yeah. This one? Yeah. You can see that shadow at the very base of the neck. Yeah. See that shadow? If you follow the neck all the way down, you almost see a little C. Yeah, definitely a stone there. Yeah. So here, this is an example of pericholecystic fluid again, but here you're seeing um, also wall thickenings. And this is really kind of to demonstrate wall thickening for you. And so you would want to stop this image, measure it at the most anterior uh, position. Here's another example where you can see thick and wall. But again, this is like a piece of the puzzle. In the context of a patient presenting with right upper quadrant pain, maybe some lab abnormalities, and then these point of care ultrasound findings, it would all kind of paint a picture of cholecystitis. Now, this is kind of a unique image. Um, and I'm not sure Mark may have been the one who captured this image. Does anybody know what this is depicting? And I don't want to get into a lot of measurements of gallbladder volume, but I do want to point this out. 
I'm sorry? Is it the bile duct? No, this isn't the bile duct. This is the gallbladder. And it's big. It's two centimeters by two and a half centimeters. I'll give you a clue. It's full of mucus. So it's stretched as full as it can go with mucus. Does anybody know the term for that or what condition it would be tied to? So this is called hydrops. Um, we see it a lot in pediatrics. Um, by saying we see it a lot, we see it with uh, KD and Kawasaki's. Mm -hmm. It is also, you can see it in some other infectious diseases. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. If you see what looks like a very, very full gallbladder, kind of maximally stretched.